Um, if we go to our next question, if that's all right with you, um, yeah. representation versus tokenism. So I feel like this is the probably the uh, probably a question I could have I should have started off with. Um, so obviously, like to to you, what is representation and what is tokenism? Um, representation is hearing from and listening to people that are affected by a specific issue and tokenism is um showing your support but not really kind of acted on that or being active in trying to change it so black lives matter obviously is a big one at the minute Where we lack representation is you know, in in all walks of life like um CEOs in government in the media there is a lack of um in education there is a lack of um, black, Asian, and minority ethnic voices compared to um, the population. So the population is not accurately represented. And then tokenism, we've got, you know, um, like shops coming out and saying, we support Black Lives Matter, but they're not, they don't do anything really. They're not closing the ethnicity pay gap. They're not making sure that their board of directors is representative of their customers and the general public. It's just, oh, we're selling a T-shirt that says Black Lives Matter. Like when ASOS sold that T-shirt, NHS Help Heroes, but refused to close their factories and people were yeah. just passing coronavirus around. Like, that's tokenism. I, I feel like my personal favourite example of, you know, they, the politicians wore those T-shirts, you know, this is what a feminist looks like. And it was made in a sweatshop, predominantly, where women work for, like, 50p, like, an hour or something like that. And I was like, yeah, that's not a great look. And that is uh, pretty bad. Um, I feel like that's yeah. where people go on to talk about, you know, white feminism versus, you know, um, more um, inclusive feminism. I feel like that that's um, a separate issue. So, like, um, like for me, representation is, uh, yeah, listening to a diverse range of opinions. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be someone from the community. I think it's best to get someone from the community. But it's, you know, if you have an expert in the field, um, that's also a good idea. Someone who's who understands it well enough to give a good um, representation. So, like, you can still get, you know... Um, someone like Dr. Cornell West, where he would talk about you know black issues, and even if you got someone else, say like I don't know like Bernie Sanders, like he won't be as articulate or as um, knowledgeable, but he'll also give a good, um, accurate representation of you know um, things that affect black people as well, because he's a guy who's learned on the issue and a guy who listens to other people as well. So I feel like representation doesn't necessarily have to be. It's better to um, get someone from that specific community. So like if you want to talk about women's issues, obviously you're much better off getting a, a woman to speak about it than you are to get a dude or you know a trans person the same thing or you know a, a minority the same thing but i feel like you don't necessarily have to but you have to listen to someone who either has knowledge of that area specifically or has lived through it if that makes sense yeah in in all possible cases i would always recommend listening to someone with lived experience because um like especially in like because what is somebody that's educated on the topic with somebody that is educated on colonialism and race issues in who has had their education in the west it's not has been educated educated in a system that is intrinsically um like um prejudice and that that doesn't tell the whole truth i mean that's what people um from a black background are telling us now is that the education system is not reflective of the actual history and lived experience of what happened so somebody that's educated on it Still hasn't um, has, has still been educated in a system that is flawed. So to yeah. learn those flaws, we need to speak to the people with the lived experience uh, who know where they've gone wrong. I feel like to to an extent the education system does need reform because I feel like there are massive problems with it. I think specifically Churchill would be the best example of that. Where you know in GCSE history you learn that Churchill was you know this great guy who I think fought in the Boer War and was like you know the guy who led the UK to victory in World War Two and blah blah blah. But then when you do A level history you realize actually the guy um, wasn't that great when it came to politics or policy. Um, specifically because you had um, obviously his failed stint as the exchequer where he caused massive deflation in the UK by going back to the gold um, standard even though John Maynard Keynes said don't do this don't be stupid um, he obviously had failed military campaigns during World War uh, One, in I think it was Gallipoli or the Dardanelles and in World War Two, he had the uh, failed thing I think it was in Norway and so because they don't teach you at GCSE level you think our oh, Churchill's this great guy who won us World War Two. but then the more you actually understand it the more you realise 
actually he was just the kind of the main inspiration and the guy who kept the UK in and then once it came to it it was the uh, the US and uh, the USSR kind of doing the main heavy lifting backed by uh, the UK I mean history is always kind minutes. of retold right. in a way that benefits the person retelling it so I mean how many people that so, much, so many people think that the Labour has a party okay, so... the Labour party has a problem with the military, um, how many people know that the Conservatives supported the Nazis at the beginning of the war? I know and the first. Why is that not talked about? The first sitting female MP, she was a massive um, anti Semite, and I think she was a Nazi sympathiser, which is something Rachel Reeves forgot to mention when she talked about her. And so I think if we wrap this up, so if if someone said to you, you know, how could you say the Conservative Party is, you know, whatever, you know, a racist party, you know, they have the most diverse um, cabinet ever. You know, what do you say to that? Um, they have created for at least the last 10 years um, policies and structures that um, discriminate against working class people, against women, against young people, against people that aren't white, against people that aren't British. Um, so maybe that's another sign of representation versus tokenism. Because yeah, that's kind of the, um, the point. I'm, so I'm... they may have a they may have diverse cabinet, but do they actually represent views and needs of the people that because, um... represent in the country? Because um, obviously you've got, you know, you've the, the Conservative Party had two, you know, female leaders. You've got uh, Priti Patel, who's the Home Secretary. You have um, Rishi Sunak, the Exchequer. You had um, Sajid Javid, the former Exchequer. And, um, you know, you know they can easily argue that, oh, you know, look, we've got, had, you know, a lot more diversity than the Labour Party. I don't know how many, who's on the shadow front bench anymore. The only person I know of is Dr Khan because she's, uh, she's pretty cool. Um, and so, you know, that's something they could easily pull out and say, you know, how can you say we're racist? But I think the whole point of, you know, representation versus tokenism is, there, is are they there because of their lived experiences and um, their benefits? Or they're there because, A, there's probably no one else to actually take those spots. And B, they're there, you know, just so you can say, you know, my black friend, you know, I can't be racist because I have a black friend. You know, do you see what I'm saying? And I feel like they're yeah. more there for, huh? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. I can't comment on that because I don't know why they've got those positions. I don't really know the qualifications that I think Sunak Sunak, 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 Sunak maybe he gets more of a pass because he had like a pass in banking which you could say is a bit dodgy in itself um, purely because of the uh, banking scandal but with Preet Patel she was a person who was sacked by the former Prime Minister because she had secret meetings with um, a foreign power Israel which is you know not the best uh, thing to be doing when you're a minister specifically and um, you know perhaps in medieval times you could really get in trouble for that um, it might cost you your life, I potentially. I mean, Boris Johnson has Russian money. the most vile racist things and, like, conspired to have a journalist beat up. Yeah, I remember that. So I don't think kind of the past really matters to the Conservatives. <laughs> And so, yeah, with, with token and verse reputation, I think it's important to make sure you actually listen to the people you bring on. Because I know, um, did you remember the clip of, I think it was from Good Morning Britain, where, you know, they were talking about, I think, knife crime. And then the, the weatherman, he he stepped up and he said, you know, this is simply not the case. These are the issues and things like that. Um, do you remember that? I think it was Good Morning Britain. It's one of those, I think it was an ITV show anyways. It's it pretty um, amazing. Like the the weatherman came out and said, you know, you guys are wrong on these issues for these specific reasons. So they brought on a people, they brought on people who were basically like to felt the left right divide. They didn't bring on, you know, proper experts. They didn't bring on, you know, someone who had actually lived through it. They just brought on, you know, people just to discuss an issue and just fill airtime essentially for ads. That's what it kind of felt like, I suppose. I mean, that happens a lot again with the, with the media that we have today. It's just, of a load of people that don't represent right, cool. the people uh, that they're talking about 